with that, we'll talk about Westhead, Westfall, a great player, uh, NBA champion in 1974, five-time NBA All-Star, three-time NBA All-First Team, All-NBA Second Team in 78. His number 44 was retired with the Phoenix Suns, second team All-American in college, and so on and so on. Uh, McAdoo, you know, you got a chance to play with him. I caught Paul toward the end of his career. Uh, and uh, very good basketball player from Southern yeah. California, went to SC. Very, yeah. very intelligent person. Did a lot in the community. Grew up in Torrance, California. So he's one of these Cali kids like myself. Um, tell us a little bit about him, Bob. Well, I, I first, me and Paul first came in contact at the uh, Pan American Trials at the Air Force Academy. And I guess out of the 75 uh, players that were there, he was one of the guys chosen along with me to make that Pan American team. So I got to see his talent when we were, you know, we were like 19 or 20 years old. And uh, I mean, neither one of us knew we were gonna be, you know, good NBA players. We were just happy to be great college players and make that uh, Pan American team. But I saw then that he was, you know, he was somebody that was, you know, very good. He was, uh, he could leap, he could shoot. He had great moves. Uh, you know, he was, he was just a complete basketball player. You know, when I first met him at the Air Force Academy and, and you know, when we played in the Pan American game. But well, you know what? He had that real unorthodox game. He had the ability to jump off the wrong foot and make layups at six four. Yeah, uh, Paul was a big, big player, and yeah. he was kind of like the big guard when Magic Johnson and they, 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 they uh, label him as that big point guard. Paul was that before Magic got there at six four and could handle the basketball. And that was the one thing uh, again about his playing career: had twelve thousand eight hundred nine points at fifteen a game, three thousand five hundred ninety one assists. Uh, wasn't good in the steel area with 1,022 steel, but his forte was putting the ball in the basket. And I remember playing against him uh, when he was with the Seattle Supersonics uh, mm -hmm. just before he got traded, uh, moved on. But uh, he was toward the end, but still had that ability to get a shot off. That uh, You can almost classify him as a very slow player, but methodical and very detailed on what he wanted to do on the floor. Yeah, I'm, I mean, uh, you have the stats. What, what, how many years did Paul get? About 12 or 13? Yeah, 12. Uh, 12 years? Uh, you know, once he got in the league, you, you kind of knew if he could have gotten through the injuries that he was going to be a long-term player because, like you said, he was a big guard. Uh, he could guard, you know, uh, point guards, uh, two guards, and he was also a hard cover himself. Because he, he, you know, he was physical with his six four, and uh, that's that's what I remember him being when we first met when we were teenagers, and the first couple of years when we were uh, in the NBA. And I guess the games that I remember most, because we kind of lost contact after we went our separate ways in the pros. I remember that Phoenix Suns, uh, Boston Celtic. Um, triple overtime in the championship where he, you know, he was just, he, he had a fantastic series against the uh, Boston Celtics. You know, it just, they, they couldn't guard him, you know, but I, unfortunately, you know, Boston ended up winning the championship because, you know, Boston at those times, they just had the better teams than everybody. But Paul, he, you know, he was, he was just a great player right from the beginning. And I failed to mention, in 2019, he was finally inducted and recognized for his talents into the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame. Uh, you know what? I didn't, I didn't know about that, but he, you know, he definitely uh, deserved that from his career. Uh, I was saddened uh, because I, I hadn't heard it on the news. I just happened to pick up my New York Times one morning and I got to the obituary section and I saw it. And it was it's like, it's like stuck in my heart because he's a contemporary of mine. We almost, you know, he's a year older than me. And I remember him when we were so young, it just kind of kind of stuck with me. And then I, I kept reading the article and said that, uh, you know, I guess they found the cancer in his brain uh, mm. summer 
of 2020. So he didn't he didn't have a long time left after that. It must have been really serious. You know, when you when you hear that big C, it's just it's just devastating to hear, you know. Yeah, that's uh, <clears throat> one of the sad parts about our life. You know, if the one thing I like to say about people who have lived and gone on is that, uh, you know, that, that uh, the day that you were born and the day that you passed away, the most significant thing in that is that little mark in between. And I think all of us, and Paul for sure, and all the people we're going to talk about, made significant impacts on the NBA, and I'm pretty sure in their community, and especially to their loved ones. And, and Paul was very good about coming back to the community. Uh, went on to be a coach in the NBA, mm-hmm. coach with Lionel Hollins uh, at Phoenix. And, um, you know, those are the significant things to me, where I, I really tells you about a man's purpose here on earth and, and in this game of basketball, because, you know, Back when I first started playing, I never thought that I would see the end of me not playing. And I'm pretty sure you think the same. And I think, again, when we do things, so you do it in the, in the, in the respect of the game, for the love of the game, yeah. but you yeah. also do it for who you are. And Paul was a good person deep down, man. Good yeah, he person. was. He was. That's what, I, that's what I remember. He was very respectful. Uh, I don't ever remember any controversy around his name. Uh, he, was, he was an upstanding citizen and you know what I, I can't remember I remember him getting a coaching job but you know like I said we kind of you know after the Pan American Games you know uh, all of us went our own ways we started having our own families and I kind of lost contact you know I'd only see him you know we nodded each other when we played against his teams you know as a player and a coach. <laughs> 